I'm not big on charities. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Don't teach a man to fish and you feed yourself. He's a grown man. Fishing's not that hard. Hey everyone, this is Leon from Fiasco and Prologue Projects. Happy holidays. On this week's episode of 5 to 4, Peter, Rhiannon, and Michael are back with their annual giving guide. As you'll hear, the hosts have recommendations galore for organizations that you can donate your time or money to in order to productively channel your grief and rage at the Supreme Court. This is 5 to 4, a podcast about how much the Supreme Court sucks. And, this week only, what you can do about it. Welcome to 5 to 4, where we dissect and analyze the Supreme Court cases that have caused our nation to fall short of its promise, like France in the World Cup. Wow. Wow. Hot off the presses. I thought you were going to do something about like maybe frayed nerves or like the stress, you know, of the game, but just came out and uh, bashed the French. I don't like that because that kind of makes like Argentina the Supreme Court, though. (laughs) Right. I like Messi, although he is sort of a a tax cheat, right? Like a money launderer. So maybe it fits. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Corrupt. That's right. That is what I meant to imply. (laughs) So it works. I'm Peter. I'm here with Rhiannon. Hi. And Michael. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. We're saying it. (laughs) No, I'm a I'm a frontline warrior in the war on Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, in the spirit of the season, we thought we'd maybe uh, provide you folks with some things you can feel good about spending your money on. And we're going to do that by repeating a holiday classic. Last year, we did a, a giving guide uh, where we identified some of our favorite organizations that could use your help during the holiday season. It was great to do. We got you know a great response from the organizations couple cases where people reached out to the organizations to like actually work for them yeah it was just a cool experience for us it was great for the organizations and we thought we're nothing if not full of holiday spirit here at five to four (laughs) so let's do it again you know no well we like really really love our listeners and have realized like what an impact like having this many listeners and this kind of platform can have i know i heard from organizations last year that said they really appreciated the donations that come in Mm -hmm. i mean these are organizations some of them that like you know a thousand dollars coming in means a lot expands their capacity to do the good work that they're doing so yeah we were really pleased and grateful for how listeners stepped up last year and thought we should do it again yeah, you guys are incredible, and you did something incredible last year, and uh, we're hoping you'll do it again. Yeah. All right, I'll kick it off with an organization that is, frankly, just more needed now than it has ever been, Repro Legal Defense Fund. They provide bail funds and defense work for people who are targeted by police and prosecutors for the outcomes of their pregnancy, whether that be abortion or not. Obviously, in the wake of Dobbs, there was a surge of donations at organizations like this. They have tapered off. And given our status as a podcast that talks about the Supreme Court, I would feel a little bit odd if we did not start off with an organization that works towards reproductive justice. So reprolegaldefensefund.org. I think that's a, a great way to kick this off. It's obviously a huge issue in this country right now. And to your point, right after Dobbs, I sort of signed up to volunteer for like a local reproductive rights org. And now I'm like on their volunteer list, but have never actually done anything. And I think there was a lot of energy and it started to dissipate. I'm exhibit A on that and we can't let that happen. And so we need to be supporting organizations like this and uh, I need to uh, reach out to them and start volunteering. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, that sounds really cool, Michael. Thanks. I am the best. (laughs) (laughs) My first organization is The Bail Project. This is a national organization that gets people out of jail. We know that the vast majority of people in the U.S. who are in jail are, of course, held there pretrial simply because... They can't afford the cash bail amount set by a judge, right? So this is one of the primary ways poor people are marginalized and punished in the criminal punishment system. 
even while presumed innocent. You know, rich people accused of crimes can pay the bail necessary to get out. Poor people cannot, so they stay in. So that's where the bail project comes in. They use funds to pay people's bail on low level offenses so that, you know, families are reunited and people are not languishing, waiting for dispositions on their cases uh, in jail. They have freed close to 30,000 people. My own former clients have received funding from the bail project to get out of jail. So this is real material help for people in need you can donate at bailproject.org. That's bail, B-A-I-L, project.org. Yeah, I think that's a great organization to choose. A, because pretrial release is so crucial just to like ensuring people's dignity. Yeah. And B, because the system as it stands is basically explicitly designed to oppress poor people. Right. Yeah. The first project I want to start with It's actually like a a pretty big one, but I want to talk about it for a few reasons. It's called the Trevor Project, and they work with LBGTQ people in crisis. And they have a 24-7 crisis hotline. They have spaces set up, you know, to help people who are maybe going to self-harm. And right now is one of the toughest times in recent memory to be LGBTQ in this country. Whether it's the state investigating parents of trans kids in Texas or fucking terrorists shooting up gay nightclubs or anything in between, it's just a very hard and scary time. And this is a time, I think, when everyone's mental health is sort of stressed And we're all feeling worn through a little bit. And so I wanted to mention this not only to encourage you guys to donate, but also if any of our listeners are LGBTQ and struggling to know that this is out here, that there's help. So check them out, thetrevorproject.org. Very cool, very important work. I totally agree with the importance of this organization. I'm really glad that that was one of your orgs, Michael. I mean, like 2022, like what a fucking year for mental health, right? And then if you add to it that you're a part of a literally targeted community, targeted by the state, targeted by your fucking neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. Targeted by members of the school board. Like you said, it's just a really tough time to be a member of these targeted communities and the Trevor Project is a great organization. Yeah. And, you know, there's no shame in admitting that you're struggling and asking for help when you need it. I've had a a number of down periods in my life and my biggest regrets in pretty much all of them is not like asking for help sooner Right. And clearer and being more proactive in taking care of myself. And I think, you know, as the host of this podcast, it, there's an onus on us because the American Medical Association recently said that our podcast is one of the top causes of depression in this country. <laughs> <laughs> For the host. <laughs> Get me out of here. Uh. <laughs> All right. My next one, the Youth Sentencing and Reentry Project. Real Peterheads know that I have a juvenile justice background, by which I mean I did uh, one internship and then, uh, (laughs) but I've remained kind of passionate about it. And uh, as an apology for not dedicating my life to it, I'm going to promote a couple of juvenile justice organizations. (laughs) This one works to keep children out of adult prison facilities, as well as uh, provides legal services to juveniles sentenced to life in prison and reentry planning for those who do leave prison. They also do policy reform work and a host of other things. It's a pretty dark time in juvenile justice spaces. The current court has made progress functionally impossible. Funding for a lot of these organizations has slowed. The organization I used to work for closed its doors a few years back, and that's not an uncommon story. So these are folks doing great work. They can always use some financial assistance. Find them at ysrp.org. Next up for me is Raices. This is coincidentally another organization that helps out youth among many other people. 
Raices is the Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services. This is a Texas organization that gives critical legal services to migrants in Texas, not just kids, but uh, they fight for family reunification, among so many other things. They defend the rights of immigrants and refugees. You know, Raices manages tens of thousands of cases a year at no cost to their clients. We're talking about kids who would otherwise be going to immigration court completely alone with zero representation. They do residency and citizenship services, asylum representation and support, uh, removal defense, DACA support, in addition to direct legal representation for families and kids. This is an invaluable organization that I feel really connected to. I know people who work for this organization. They do incredible work. It is beyond needed in Texas. So you can find Raices. You can find more information about them and you can donate at RaicesTexas.org. Raices is R-A-I-C-E-S, Texas.org. So the next thing I want to talk about is the Native American Rights Fund. So if you're a regular listener of this podcast, you know we've talked about how Justice Gorsuch is actually like a very fervent defender of tribal sovereignty and native rights, which means that even in the midst of the court's rightward slide, up until recently, native groups have had good success at the court. But much like switching Ruth Bader Ginsburg for Amy Coney Barrett changed the math on abortion and many other issues. It changed the math on these native cases. And we've discussed how the Indian Child Welfare Act is in danger, how tribal sovereignty is in danger. So organizations like the Native American Rights Fund are more important than ever. They are in court fighting to enforce all these treaties on the books that are constantly ignored to protect tribal sovereignty, to protect Native children, which is going to be even more important as the Supreme Court starts taking wax at what few remaining protections tribes have. So check them out, narf.org, N-A-R-F.org. Yeah, it's really important to note, too, the importance of this organization in terms of like who they're up against. You know, Native American tribes and the organizations that represent those interests are up against lots of wealthy, very powerful money backed organizations that represent, for instance, the casino industry, oil and gas all kinds of uh, corporations that would like to exploit especially the land resources of sovereign tribal lands. Like Ocean's Eleven villains, Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we're doing. Yeah, the worst fucking people. Yeah. All right. My last one, another juvenile justice organization, Youth Art and Self-Empowerment Project. They're located in Philly and they do some policy work aiming to end the practice of trying juveniles as adults. But what sets them apart is that they run a bunch of programs in Philadelphia jails primarily where they work directly with incarcerated young people. Really good work in the city where I sort of grew up, Philly. Yeah. YASproject.com. Have you ever actually grown up? <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, claiming Philly, worst sports fans in the world. Worst by some metrics. <laughs> <laughs> Highest number of batteries thrown onto the field. Yeah. <laughs> My last organization is one I'm really excited to share with listeners. It's called Freedom Reads. Freedom Reads is an amazing org that installs libraries in prisons on the housing units where literature can be accessible to everyone on the inside. So Freedom Libraries, as they're called, kind of expand on the idea of like a library book cart. They create space on the inside for reading, imagination, discussion of art and literature, community building. They have opened freedom libraries in prisons in Massachusetts, Louisiana, New York, and Colorado. This organization was founded by Dwayne Betts, who is formerly incarcerated, a survivor of solitary confinement. And he has said, quote, I rediscovered a sense of freedom the system had tried to beat out of me because of a book. I realized that a poem can give somebody a whole world of hope. 
After reading that book, I dedicated myself to helping other prisoners and people outside of prison discover the freedom blueprint that poetry, literature, and other arts can provide. This is an amazing organization, and you can find them at freedomreads.org. Yeah, and in exchange for your donations, we are negotiating a deal with them to not allow anyone to read Supreme Court justice autobiographies. <laughs> <laughs> Should not be valued literature. No, it's forbidden. <laughs> so, as many of you know, I am an animal lover and especially a dog lover and a proud dog owner. You Sure, you've heard my dogs barking and whining in the background of many an episode, <laughs> much to the chagrin of our producers. And so I want to talk about an organization that I actually got two dogs from. It's called Hearts and Bones Rescue. And a major problem that I think is not well known is that Texas shelters are just overfull. And it leads to a lot of dogs being euthanized and a lot of organizations that are basically dedicated to taking overflow from, from Texas out of state. Yeah. And so this is one of those organizations. They have a ranch in Texas where they will collect some critical mass of dogs from strays or shelters or, or whatever in Texas. And then they bring them to New York where they have a network of foster parents that they place them with so the dogs are in a loving foster home rather than a shelter. It's a wonderful organization. They've set us up with two lovely dogs that we adore. If you want to donate, they could use your help. But also, if you are in the New York area, uh, you should consider fostering dogs. We fostered, and it was lovely. And we fell in love, and we ended up adopting our dog as a foster fail. So check them out, heartsandbonesrescue.com. I'll uh, keep that in mind in case uh, I ever want to watch Cosmo fight to the death with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Uh, the Where Is He Project, an organization dedicated to geolocating Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, people who are trying to track Elon Musk's real location in real time have suffered some recent setbacks. This organization is fully committed to the project of finding, tracking, and eventually <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Rachel cut that. <laughs> All right, folks, we hope you have a lovely holiday season, and we hope you throw some support to uh, some or all of these organizations, and we will see you in the new year. Happy New Happy Year. Happy New Year. We love you. 5 to 4 is presented by Prologue Projects. Rachel Ward is our producer. Leon Nafok and Andrew Parsons provide editorial support. Our production manager is Persia Verlin. And our assistant producer is Arlene Arevalo. Peter Murphy designed our website, 54pod.com. Our artwork is by Teddy Blanks at Chips NY, and our theme song is by Spatial Relations. Uh, hey guys, this is Rachel. Normally there's something funny at the end of the show, but uh, nobody ever asked me what organizations I want to promote. So I'm putting this here just to see if uh, anyone on the show team actually notices that I did it. I want to give a shout out to Our Children's Trust. I did a story about them last year, and they do really amazing work helping support legal action brought by youth against governments around the world in support of a safe climate. So if you've seen the uh, film Youth v. Gov on Netflix, that's the work that they do. And probably their most famous case is Juliana v. United States. In that case, they're asserting that the government has affirmatively acted to cause climate change and as a result violated uh, Gen Z and Gen Alpha's constitutional rights to life, liberty, and property, and also failed to protect essential public trust resources. But they're involved in cases like this all over the world with partners uh, in Australia and Pakistan and uh, lots of different places. 
And they're not just looking for funding. They could also use help from lawyers, which I assume some lawyers are listening to this show. If you go to their website, ourchildrenstrust.org, and then click over to the jobs and internship page, there's a form you can fill out to contribute your time pro bono. They are also looking for legal interns, graduate and undergraduate folks. So yeah, you can send them some money or send them some time at ourchildrenstrust.org and support their work to advocate for a safe climate for generations to come.